humble and not conceited, contented and easily satisfied, not busy with duties and frugal in their ways, peaceful and calm and wise and skillful, not proud or demanding in nature. Let them not do the slightest thing that the wise would later reprove, wishing in gladness and in safety. May all beings be happy, whatever living beings there may be, whether they are weak or strong, omitting none, the great or the mighty, medium, short or small, the seen and the unseen, those living near and far away, those born and to be born. May all beings be happy. Let none deceive another or despise any being in any state. Let none through anger or ill will wish harm upon another, even as a mother protects with her life her child, her only child. So with a boundless heart should one cherish all living beings, radiating kindness over the entire world, spreading upwards to the skies and downwards to the depths, outwards and unbounded, freed from hatred and ill will, whether standing or walking, seated or lying down, free from drowsiness, one should sustain this rec recollection. This is said to be the sublime abiding. By not holding to false views, the pure-hearted one, having clarity of vision, being freed from all sense desires, is not born again into this world. Thank you, Ajahn. All right, uh, tonight's program is about tilakana. Is everybody familiar with that term? Possibly not. Tilakana means the three signs. This is one of the most uh, basic teachings in uh, the Buddha Sasana. There are three characteristics of existence. Impermanence, anicca, suffering, or dukkha, and non-self, anatta. Chris, you've disappeared. That all for John, I'm still with you. Yes, okay. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Yeah, still... That all formations are impermanent, uh, that all formations are subject to suffering, and that everything is without a self. Therefore, and I'll read the khandas here. Therefore, whatever there is of corporality, feeling, perception, mental formations, and consciousness, of all these things one should understand according to reality and to true wisdom. This does not belong to me. This is not I. This is not am I. Not, is this my ego? This is not my ego. It is by the full comprehension of the three characteristics by direct meditative experience, which constitutes liberating insight. And so that, this is why I've picked this as our meditation subject. So to go on, the insight leading to the first stage of deliverance, stream entry, is often expressed in terms of impermanence. 
Do you want me to keep on going? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yes, I think it's okay, uh, John. How, how are others feeling? Mar Marlene? Uh, uh, Cameron? I think another monk is just coming, please, I think. Uh, okay. Do you want to can you try speaking up? Okay, well? yes. Um, the insight leading to the first stage of deliverance, dream entry, is often expressed in terms of impermanence. All right, so from this, the Dhammachaka Pavatana is the first sutta that the, that the Buddha recited. This comes from that. Whatever is subject to origination is subject to cessation. And this is the, the root to, uh, is often considered the root to Sautapana. Now, okay, so number one, impermanence. From impermanence, uh, suffering and non-self, the two others are derived. So all formations are impermanent. The five aggregates, uh, which I just read before, the 12 personal and external sense, uh, sense bases, the ayatana, and only nibbana, which is unconditioned and not a formation, is permanent. Only nibbana. <clears throat> The impermanency of things is the rising, passing, and changing of things, or the disappearance of things that have become or, aris or arisen. The meaning of that is that these things never persist in the same way, but that they are vanishing, dissolving from moment to moment. Number two is dukkha, suffering. That is the second, uh, second sign, or what we call suffering or pain usually, unsatisfactoriness or liability to suffering, it refers to the unsatisfactory nature of all conditioned phenomena because of the impermanence. Because of impermanence, they are all liable to suffering, including pleasurable experience. All right. Number three is anatta, or non-self. Uh, Non-ego impersonality. And I'll, I'll lead this by the saying, nothing whatsoever should be clung to as I or myself or mine. As I or mine. The central doctrine, this is the central doctrine of Buddhism. The crux. All things should not be clung to. This is the unique teaching of Buddha's Dhamma, of the Buddha Dhamma. Thus, in the Visuddhimagga, we have this statement, these four statements. Mere suffering exists, no sufferer is found. The deeds are, but no doer is there. Nibbana is, but not the man that enters it. The path is, but no traveler on it is seen. And that's uh, John Brahm's favorite statement, I think. Now, these three signs that I just uh, named were given by the Buddha to monks as subjects for meditation in, um, in the scriptures. And uh, he gave to each uh, monk who asked him uh, one of these. And he looked back and saw in his psychic vision that in the past that each one of them in, in his past life was very good at one of these. And so he gave them first anicca, second dukkha, and third anatta. He gave each one a, a different one because that person excelled at that particular uh, meditation.
So we're right about on time <laughs> for the meditation. All right. Uh, and I, I am um, suggesting that you meditate on either on one of these signs. Pick one that you like. If, are you clear? It's impermanence, suffering, or not self. And you pick one for a half hour. If you don't want to do it that way, you can split it up and do each one of three for 10 minutes each. But I think maybe that's a little bit difficult to do if you're not familiar with it already. And it's up to you what you do. I'll take suggestions. What I do uh, say when you're meditating on each one of these is observe with sharp mindfulness. This is the way you're mindful of what's taking place in the present moment. And you're either mindful of impermanence and how it affects your aggregates, possibly, how it affects the world around you, and so on. Or dukkha, suffering. Uh, if you're suffering, or you can imagine what, what aggregate in you is suffering. What is the aggregate? Is it the physical body? Is it the mind, consciousness, perception, and so on? And the last one, do you, can you see in the not-self aspect the possibility that there is no real self, that it, it's an illusion? Remember, what, so nothing whatsoever should be clung to as I or mine. All right, is, are there any questions? Can I clarify this at all? I know it's been very uh, disjointed. Can everyone, um, does everyone feel that they can go ahead and do this meditation on one of the signs? Uh, yes. Um, all right, impermanence. You're, with sharp mindfulness, you're aware of the present. And because of your sharp mindfulness, you begin to be able to see the impermanence of the world around you, whether it's your own self, what's going on in your own body, in your own mind, or it could be in the room around you. Yes, but what you've actually chosen is impermanence as the subject. That's the subject that, for instance, that the Buddha gave a monk. Impermanence was the subject, the meditation subject. Okay? Oops. <laughs> uh, well, that's why I uh, said observe with sharp mindfulness. And when you observe with sharp mindfulness the world around you, whatever it is you pick, and it's, it's all right if you pick some subject like your knee or your foot or your head or the wall, whatever you pick, observe it with sharp mindfulness and you'll begin eventually to see impermanence. Yeah, thank you. Anything else?
elaborate on suffering. Well, in in this, well, in in this suffering, in this uh, particular case, if you're not suffering, uh, you can imagine in your mind, you can imagine yourself as uh, suffering at some time, some time that you remember in the past. And you can, you can imagine that, um, you can imagine that suffering, say, in your arm or something like that. That's the easiest, the suffering in your own self. Or you can think in a more abstract way about suffering in the world. Yes. Of what? Arising and passing of what? Of the breath. Excellent. Excellent. Yes. That's an excellent choice. And uh, if I had it to do over, I would just say that to everybody. S simply use the breath and watch the breath and see the impermanence. Or if there is some kind of suffering involved while you're watching the breath, you can turn your uh, attention to that. And also, can you see, while you're watching the breath, can you begin to see the not-self aspect? That this is not you. This is a phenomenon, but it is not, it is not an I, it is not mine. It is not a self. All right? All right, now you can meditate the way those monks meditated. All right, is everybody okay? All right, so we'll start at 7.36 by mine, and I'll go until um, six past eight by my watch clock. All right, Chris? All right. Thank you. And we'll start.
Hello, Chris. I think we've come to the end of the session, the meditation session, by my clock. All right. Are there any questions? Oh, hmm. Yes, that's right. That's exactly right. Yeah. What was the big, very beginning of what you said you read? That's a, a, a rather hard question. Um, the monks aren't filled in with <laughs> the processes of the brain. Uh, this is a part of consciousness. Uh, um, Everything about us changes from second to second, and yet we, we maintain a memory of it all the way back to our ch uh, childhood. This does not mean that um, the self that we think we are uh, either exists as a separate individual uh, or that um, it will always exist uh, after death. These are processes, phenomena of nature. And so um, how it works, uh, how, how memory works and so on, I, I don't know. I wouldn't begin to try to explain that because I, I really don't know anything about it. neurology and so on. <laughs> I'm sorry if uh, I haven't given a very good answer to the question, but um, this is part of nature, uh, and uh, we have memory. We have memory that goes all the way back as far as we can remember. All right? I'm, I'm sorry I can't give you a better uh, explanation of it. I mean, in general, in general, acceptance for things that we don't want. Hmm. Well, part of uh, part of the path is to accept is to accept uh, things that you don't want and things that you do want. Uh, that's that's part of um, a meditative existence to see things in the world that you you don't like or don't accept or that somehow impinge on you and, and yet to go with them, to accept them, 
to open your heart, as Ajahn Brahm says many times, open your heart, and, uh, and that, that is the way. Open your heart is the way. Open your heart to the things that you dislike, or to the people you dislike, or the things that you dislike. Even to your own self, if you, do, if you dislike yourself, Open your heart to these things that you don't like. <laughs> Let my heart be open and the way me be made clear. And if you haven't read Ajahn Brahm's books in which he talks about opening your heart, I, I um, suggest getting one. Yes. Hmm. Well, um, you're assuming there at the first, you're diagnosing and saying it's your mind. Uh, you may have some kind of, have you seen a doctor uh, concerning your stomach? You have. Oh, thank you. Um, I'm sorry I don't, I don't have a, an, an immediate response for how to cure your stomach problems, but I have, I have the same stomach problems you have, so I sympathize greatly with you. I can, I can recommend Metamucil. Uh, and I, 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 Metamucil? It's psyllium husk and you pour it in water and uh, you swish it around and drink it at least once a day. Metamucil. <laughs> it works. And uh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm being serious. That's the, be that's the best I can do. I don't know if... Uh, I don't know if I can suggest anything about your mind except meditating and relaxing and accepting whatever whatever comes let it come whatever goes let it go relax relax if you're a very tense person then relaxation is very important relax your stomach and your whole self your whole your whole organism, just relax and accept. All right.
Yes. Yes, that's true. And you can't change that. That's the way things are. That's why that's why suffering is so important. Dukkha is so important. And it's so important to learn these three signs and to come to grips with them. You want me to explain the non-self? Okay. Um, there's a very good book called um, by Buddha Dasa called um, let me show it to you I brought it along so that I could recommend it hmm and now I can't find it oh Heartwood of the Bodhi Tree. Has anybody heard of this before? Uh, if you want to understand non-self, uh, it's also called uh, sunya, which means the void. This is called Heartwood of the Bodhi Tree. And Buddha Dasa was playing around a bit. The, comical part of that is, in a way, is that the Bodhi tree has no heartwood. It's like a banana tree. It, there is no strong hard wood in, inside. But what, it, what there is in the Bodhi tree, this is the Buddha tree, you know, uh, fi, fi, ficus, the ficus tree. What is inside <clears throat> is void. And that is the key word, V-O-I-D, void. And void in this terminology means non-self. In the Buddha, Buddha's Dhamma, void means non-self. In Theravada Buddhism, not Mahayana. I'm not talking about Mahayana now. In Theravada Buddhism, the void means non-self or no self. And uh, I would recommend getting this book, Heartwood of the Bodhi Tree. It's a few years old, but it's certainly worth uh, looking into if you've never heard of it or never seen it before. Buddha Dasa. B-U-D-D-H-A-D-A-S-A. -A -A. Buddha Dasa Bhikkhu. And you'll have a wealth of um, explanations and uh, uh, explanations of what non-self means and how important it is and why it is, as I said before, the crux of Buddhism, of the Buddha Dhamma. The very crux is non-self. Non and uh, the term that's used is sunya. Sunya means void. Sunyata means voidness. Sunyata means voidness. And sunya means the void. And what that means is the non-self aspect of everything. Everything, even Nibbana, has no self. Even Nibbana. <laughs> so I hope that helps.
uh, well, you're watching, you're watching with sharp mindfulness this phenomenon in your body, this one particular part of your body, I take it. I didn't quite understand what was... Well, oh. Hmm. Yes, and if you watch it, uh, you'll see that it varies and changes. You'll see the truth of suffering, but there's also the truth of the non-self there to watch. That you don't, you cannot take anything whatsoever as being I or mine. That's what you do. That's what you should do in, in your case, in particular. Well, in fact, the Buddha's, the Buddha's teaching on non-self is the impersonality of the self. The impersonality is, is part of it. There is no self and it's impersonal. It's called that, uh, the impersonal teacher. The Buddha was called the, imperson, the impersonal teacher. <laughs> and you can look on that uh, and you may have pain, but if you look on that and learn that it's not I and it's not mine, it's not my soul, it's not me, it's not mine, it's not my soul. Thank you. Right action and right effort? Right action and right effort. <laughs> right action and uh, uh, Well, it's just a matter, it's just a matter of terminology and the two are different. And uh, you need to look at uh, more description in, in the books, in the textbooks, and uh, more description about each one of those. Could you do that? Because I, 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 I'm sure the textbooks explain it fairly clearly. Well, it's just, a, in this case, it's just a matter of, of two words that are, that happen to be similar, uh, but the effort and, uh, effort and action are two different things. I mean, there, there can be some action to effort. <laughs> uh, I, w I recommend looking in the textbooks uh, Something was cut off, I think. Okay. Okay. Uh, 
Well, they relate to they were, they relate to two different things, so it's too difficult to explain. It's too difficult for me to explain right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've, I'm de I'm defeated. <laughs> I think have we reached. <laughs> Have we reached the end? I'm, I'm. Yeah. Okay. Yes. That's good. Excellent. I hope that helps. <laughs> yes, and thank you very much. And I uh, apologize for all the problems we had at the beginning, but I think it. <laughs> certainly worth it. <laughs> um, okay. And this is the, the blessing. Sabe Buddha Bala Pata Pacheka Nang Chayang Balang Arhata Nang Tatenjana Rakang Bandami Sabaso.